Hey, welcome back everybody. So as you probably saw from the uh, caption of the video, I have finished another 100 miniatures. So this batch was a little, got a little bit of a slog there, trying to paint up so many of these, uh, these kind of cheap rubbery plastic board game miniatures from... Uh, First there was the ones in uh, Castle Ravenloft, and then I was doing the ones from a Sword and Sorcery. So I had kind of taken out the best miniatures and already painted them. So I had a whole bunch of these kind of uh, little big bitty kind of squiggly characters to do. And there was a couple of times I really started to say, you know what, you know, I'm not doing this. I'm not feeling this. These can just go back in the box. I'm probably not going to keep them anyway. But I pressed on because, you know, even if I decide to get rid of the game, you know, having the whole game painted is a lot better than having, uh, you know, just a few of the heroes done. You, you really can't say that the game is painted. But let's see the last batch that we finished or the batches. Huh, and then we'll talk about our, our plans after this. So first of all, let's just get these things out the way that uh, that we saw from Sword and Sorcery. So these were some more of those kind of orc shamans, orc goblins. This guy wanted to make it look like he had like an onyx skull. So you see the black skull in his hand. This guy's holding some kind of crown or something. I don't know. Maybe it's not supposed to be a crown, but that's what I've made it look like. Uh, so, you know, nothing special with these. I think I've got four different colors of these guys now. You know, this one I gave gave the white to. It looks like I didn't even bother to give him a wash. So I may go back, may go back and give him a wash. Although, oh, it looks like it, then it doesn't look like it. So I can't tell take a look at these two so these are like two of the bigger orc champions again pretty similarly attired this one has like two axes he has two axes but they're they're all different axes even these two in their left hands aren't the same uh no i think maybe those are the same so but you can see the different armor patterns different colors most of it is the same but uh, you could either use these as you know similar similar warriors in a similar tribe or you can use it as the same person just differently equipped let's grab some more of these kind of nonchalant miniatures these are some of the pirates from sword and sorcery not bad I mean not bad all in all I mean I've got a lot better pirate miniatures so I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't be buying the game just to pull these guys out, but they're actually not that bad. I kind of wanted to make them look like they were kind of in a uniform, like they were on the. You could tell they were selling on the same ship, but I didn't want to get them the exact same colors, because pretty much it's already the same figure, just with a few slight modifications, uh, like with the hat and stuff. So who will we look at next? She shouldn't be in here. Right, let's look at uh these two females. So this one I I wanted to make look like an older woman who's still thieving, even though she's somewhat past her thieving years. And it's funny because right after I started painting her, I found a I found a D and D miniature of this exact same skull. It was one of their pre-painted ones. So this is a repeat skull. But that's cool because I could use one as the younger version and one as her later in her life. This was an elven sorceress from, uh, what is that, Sword and Sorcery? So I didn't, this was like one of the ones I just sat and stared at, didn't know what I wanted to do with it for a while. Until finally I decided to go ahead and, you know, try this whole green thing out. Now what I did was, since I got her up, was I painted this guy in kind of a similar scheme. So to make it look like maybe they're brothers and sisters or maybe they're, heck, I guess they could be husband and wife. 
but they're fighting together. So I thought that was I thought that came out pretty good, pretty cool. And then uh, I did this guy up because he looks like he's some elf to kind of join them. You know, and he's actually trying to form some fireball to hurl. So he's obviously the magic user. I tried a little OSL, a nod to OSL with the yellow and stuff around his sleeves. No, you can't really see. It doesn't look that way, but eh, I just figured I'd try to, you know, do a little homage to the object source lighting, which is what OSL means. But again, he's an elf, so he has a little bit different blue than they do. Uh, but you can see them all as a party. These are, I think these are all from Sword and Sorcery, except for he might actually be, yeah, so he's a Castle Ravenloft miniature. Eladrin Wizard. These other two, I think, are the Sword and Sorcery. Uh, these are some more miniatures. I think Castle Ravenloft. You can tell by the bottom of their bases that blue. So I think this is just a dwarf cleric. This is called a dragonborn fighter. So, you know, these are the type of miniatures you just got to work with what they give you. But if you're playing the game, they sure look a lot better painted. And we've got this woman here, a female. So this is probably from Sword and Sorcery, probably one of the heroes. I did her up in almost all black as a rogue. So I gave her the night blue, you know, scarf or whatever she has around her waist. And then mostly all the rest of her outfit is black with some, some kind of like uh, brass or bronze. Uh, actually, I think that's iron highlights like on the knees and her breastplates and stuff. So not too bad, not too bad of a miniature. I mean, again, that was another miniature I probably stared at way too long trying to decide what to do with it. This female on the right right here was very quick and easy to do. Not quite sure what she is or who she represents. She's Alyssa, a human ranger. Well, I guess I now I do know. I did not do her up as a ranger because it looked like she was wearing a whole bunch of armor. So I don't know, maybe that was supposed to be leaves or something, but uh, I more or less did her up as like a female fighter. And this is a hag. And I wanted to look like she was just totally screaming like she was losing her mind. You know, like maybe she's calling out to somebody or warning them. Ah! You know, I put the I put the, uh, she has, uh, <laughs> she has something running out her nose, let's just say that, fluids, <laughs> has the deep red tongue, I did her eyes to make it look like she was blind, as you can see, so very pathetic, and I also did this to make that look like that was her elbow jammed up out of her dress. Which maybe that's why she's screaming. <laughs> a decent miniature. You can definitely squeeze her into some stories as everybody, you know, wants to go consult an oracle in the stories. This is Lady Val from the Free Folk. This is the Free Folk set. This is Tormund Giant's Bane. Again, Song of Ice and Fire, Free Folk. Tormund Giant's Bane. This is Craster. Free Folk. Still have to do his base. From a Song of Ice and Fire. This is Craster. And this is Mance Raider. The King Beyond the Wall. Is that what they call him? Man's Raider. Oh, he I was actually one of the characters I liked in the uh, TV series. Did not read the book, so I'm not sure what he plays in the role in the book. Whole paint scheme is my own. 
I saw other paint schemes, didn't like them. So I made up my own. This is Man's Raider. All right. So let's take you, show you this miniature here. Now this is actually Count Strahd, who is the main antagonist in the Castle Ravenloft box set. He is a vampire, right? So that's why I tried to give him that bluish white skin. You know, he's richly appareled. But for all the hundreds of years that he's been able to live and acquire wealth. So when I first opened the box, I did not know which one was supposed to be Count Strahd. But I watched another unboxing, which I guess somebody that plays D&D. &D, and that's when I, was, I came to the realization this is Count Strahd. And so I gave him a good paint scheme. I figured you have to have some black in there. I haven't seen many people use the black, but I figured you gotta have some black. Vampire means black. This is the completed uh, skeleton champion on carrion worm. You know, and this worm is probably not much different than what you guys have seen me do with some of the other worms in my collection, the jar and giant worms. But I, I do them all a little bit differently. You might not be able to tell. Like this guy literally has like bloody fluid oozing through his, the crevices of his, uh, you know, his segmented outer coating. So that's what makes him particularly hideous. But yeah, this was actually a pretty, pretty cool miniature to do. Another big one I tried to do in my own way was this golem, or what is it, rock golem or rock beast? I don't think it really says under here. Game Workshop? Oh, I, I rebased him. I think I did. Yeah, I think I rebased this guy. Uh, actually, I like him, though. So I gave him, like, the stone blades. I gave him that kind of a green, metallic green core. I wanted to make it look like his, his life emanates from this belt around his waist. And you can see the energies infusing him. But I don't know. I saw a lot of people do different things with this again online. And I decided to go with my own, my own ideals. And last but not least is our... I don't know what they call this, a bone dragon or a deceased dragon, a gravestorm dracolich. So I am definitely pleased with the way this guy came out. So I wanted to give him kind of a bony effect. He's got bile running down his mouth and decay. I started to put it in more places over him, but... I didn't really see how I could justify it since he's pretty much all bone. But I think I, I like this. I like this scheme. You can see the desiccated flesh left between his wings, but that's about it. The rest of him is, you know, pretty decayed. And, you know, there's different shades of it that are, that are green and a little bit of white. I mean, there's some white and then there's some areas with a little bit of green. Which I'm not sure if you're picking it up, but I thought that I wanted to have that effect that different parts of his body were at different stages of decay. And so that is the last miniatures I needed to do to finish this batch. And I think this this set was what two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 15, 17, 19, uh, 20, oops, 20, 21, 22, and 23. So that was another batch of 23 miniatures. 
And I think those took me the better part of probably a week or half a week to finish all 23 of these. Probably a week. But there you go, guys. So that is another 100 miniatures completed. Uh, the next video I do, I will show you the next batch of 100 that I have. Uh, although I will probably take a break in between and do some basing. Start basing up all of these miniatures. I think I got about 400 miniatures to get based. So I'm going to go ahead and knock that out. Probably do a few videos on that. And then I will show you the next 100 because I do have most of them picked out. And it's, a, it's an exciting batch. I'm looking forward to it. Take care. God bless.